Good morning, and welcome back to MCSA live from Olive Ranch, Mississippi. I'm Sierra Rhymes, and today on our special, we have a special guest with us, Jeanette Walls. Without further ado, here's Marcy Vandenberg to explain. Thank you, Sierra. Jeanette Walls inspired many young readers around the world through her life story, The Glass Castle. Please give a round of applause to the act, to the author of the story, The Glass Castle, Jeanette Walls. Good morning. Yeah. Thank y'all for having me on that show. I'm really happy that people like to hear my story. Yeah, it's very inspiring. Thank you. Okay, shall we get started? We shall. All right. So tell me about where you were born. Well, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona, and it was like a desert kind of thing. So I'll just set this up for y'all so y'all can look at it. It was always sunny and very, it was like, it was always hot, but it wasn't humid, you know? It was like dry desert heat so you didn't sweat as much like down here in Mississippi it's always hot and you always get sweaty <laughs> but I just loved it and everyone loves going there they call it the Sun Valley because it's always sunny and everyone it's a great place to visit y'all should go sometime is there any particular thing that you remember uh I just remember going out in the desert and always looking up at the stars with my dad and we just always got to pick our favorite ones out it was a great memory Alright, um, did you spend a lot of your time in Arizona? Actually, I did not. Um, we moved around a lot. My dad liked to call it the skedaddle. And so, we went from Phoenix to Las Vegas. Then we went to San Francisco. Then we went to Midland. Then Blythe. And that was all the places we stayed in California. But when we stayed there, we never got a good home to live in. It was always really bad like there was no furniture no running water and we'd have to sleep in refrigerator boxes and when we would move we didn't get to take our stuff we got to take one thing each and if it didn't fit then it was thrown out the window and then after we stayed in california for a while we went to battle mountain and then we went back to phoenix because my grandma died and that was the first real home i called you know home because it was actually uh decent to live in and so after that, my dad wanted to move and we went to Welch. So we stayed there for a while till I was a junior in high school. And then I moved to New York because of my sister. She moved first and then the rest of my family moved there as well. Of those places, which would you call your favorite? I would probably have to say Phoenix because I spent a lot of time there. All right. Now on to Anna Kate. What made you finally leave New York? Well, I knew that my dad could never provide the future that I needed, and I could never get far staying there in Welch. So when my sister moved to follow her dream, I just knew I had to do the same as well. How did you support yourself when you moved? When I first went there, I got a job at a burger joint, and I just stayed with my sister, and we both played half rent. And then when I, in high school, I got a internship, inter internship with um a newspaper reporter and after i graduated high school they actually gave me a real job and i started making some really good money and i just really liked the job because i always knew what was going on like when i was growing up i, I didn't know anything that was going on in the world okay. knowing that you moved from place to place how did you or how were you able to keep a steady education well it wasn't exactly steady when we moved we'd get enrolled for a little bit and then we just I was always in the smarter classes, but sometimes they would put me down because the schools that we went to, they were really offended by the way I was like so smart in class. And so when I went to Welch, I did stay there for my middle school and high school till I was a junior. And then when I went to New York, I finished high school there and I went to college there as well. Um, speaking of your siblings, how are your siblings doing? Uh, my siblings. My oldest sibling, my oldest sister, Lori, she followed her dream as an artist and she's an illustrator in Manhattan now. My brother, when we first moved to New York, he was a police, he always wanted to be one. But now he is enrolled in college and he wants to be a teacher. And my youngest sister, she kind of got off on the wrong track and we're trying to keep her back straight. So here's a picture of them when we were younger. It's kind of one of my favorite pictures in our home. Us. And then here's a picture of my home today. 
or when I first moved. And this is, New York's a really big part of my life because that's the first step I moved, like, doing my own stuff. Well, your story was very inspiring to me around the world. Um, thank you for coming out, and Well, thank you for letting me share with y'all. It's really important for people to hear my story. It is. Well, let's give a round of applause to Jeanette Walls. <laughs> Good morning. This is MCSA live from Olive Branch, and I'm Marcy Vandenberg, and we're back with Jeanette Walls. Jeanette, can you explain to us what was going on in the world when you were growing up? I sure can. I grew up in the 1970s, and the first thing I want to share with you. break up on May 8th, 1970, and their last album was Let It Be, and everyone was really heartbroken because they were so looked up to as a band. Tickets. Rock and roll! Yeah! Here we go! <laughs> and the, a really big part that changed America was the Vietnam War. It was a 20 year long battle between us and Vietnam. And it finally ended in 1975, and everyone was really happy that we finally got our victory. So, Jeanette, um, what, do you remember any of this taking place as you were growing up, or? No, when we would move around a lot, we, our dad did it, and mom didn't really believe in TV and news, and it always really made them mad when we would talk about it, so we never actually got to know anything that was happening. So that's why I love being in the airport so much, so I could find out what was actually going on. All right, well, thank you for coming back. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. Today is the day at the Vietnam War Men's of the day of 1970. <laughs> Tonight on MCSA, the show takes a twist. Tonight I'll be your host and I'll be interviewing Sierra Riles on her opinion of my book, The Glass Castle, on whether it should be banned on, in high school classrooms or not. Okay. Jeanette Wall's classic novel, The Glass Castle, is quite an eye-opener. However, the author displays sexual scenes, substance abuse, and profanity. Although the, uh, the book illustrates her life story, 
There are many reasons it should be banned in high schools. The glass castle contains explicit scenes that could be against religion and parenting styles. One of the disturbances that is brought to the reader is the way Jeanette Wallace was sexually abused as a child. Guess what, Billy shouted. I raped you. She was raped at age 8 by a young boy who was only 11. Jeanette was also touched inappropriately by her uncle and a random guy on the street. Some parents prefer to talk about sexual relations with their children instead of letting a book give them the wrong idea about the world. You crazy. Dad hollered. Get your back in this car. The glass castle contains a tremendous amount of profanity. The way the language is used is disturbing for most readers. Profanity is used in context, but it's also repeated and offensive. Using God's name as vain is violating one of the Ten Commandments that some religions use as a guideline, which it comes across as offensive. Substance abuse is shown throughout the book due to depression, anger, and inability to have a close relationship. Jeanette's father, Rex Walls, suffers from alcoholism throughout the novel. One can see how not only Rex is affected, but his family is also brought down and suffers. Rex drank, his pro Rex drank his problems away. After drinking, he becomes a mad person who throws chairs and threatens to beat his wife and others who cross, cross paths with him. I was afraid he would smush her with the car, but instead he got out and dragged her with her legs flailing and threw her into the car. These actions by Rex Walls bring disturbance to the reader in the wrong idea. Reading is one of the country's greatest freedoms. When, bo when books are banned, it, uh, it illustrates refusal of the censors to look at the world with open eyes. The First Amend Amendment states or prohibits the government from in interfering with printing and distribution, distribution of information or opinions. The freedom of press protects the rights of individuals to ex express themselves through publication. The glass, the glass Castle has been challenged numerous times. Although the novel is Jeanette Walls' life story, it has been ranked number nine on books that should be banned. Usually, using sexual scenes, profanity, and substance abuse is inappropriate for young high school readers. Thank you for being honest with me. I know it's really hard to read. And I just understand that it will be hard for high school students to read. and NCSA has asked me to pick the most dramatic part of my book, The Glass Castle. However, I cannot read it myself, so I've asked my dear friend Anna Kate to read it for me. I was sitting in a taxi, wondering if I had overdressed for the evening, when I looked out the window and saw Mom reading through a dumpster. It was just after dark, a blustery March wind whipped the steam coming out of the manholes, and people hurried along the sidewalks with their collars turned up. I was in, stuck in traffic, two blocks from the party where I was heading. Mom stood 15 feet away. She had tad rags around her shoulders to keep out the spring chill and was picking through the trash while her dog, a black and white terrier mix, played at her feet. Mom's gestures were all familiar, the way she tilted her head and thrusted out her lower lip when setting items of potential value that she hoisted out of the dumpster, the way her eyes widened with childish glee when she found something she liked. Her long hair was strung with gray, tangled and matted, and her eyes sunk deep into their sockets. But still, she reminded me of my, the mom she'd been when I was a kid, swan diving off cliffs and painting in the desert and reading Shakespeare aloud. Her cheekbones were still high and strong, but the skin was parched and ruddy from all those winters and summers exposed to the elements. To the people walking by, she probably looked like any of the thousands of homeless people in New York City. It had been months since I laid my eyes on mom. And when she looked up, I was overcome with panic, and she'd see that she'd seen me and call out my name, and that someone on the way to the party would spot us together, and Mom would introduce herself, and my secret would be out. I slid down in the seat and asked the driver to turn around and take me home to Park Avenue. A taxi pulled up in front of my building. The doorman held the door for me, and the elevator man took me up to the floor. My husband was working late, as he did most nights, and the apartment was silent, except except for the click on my heels on the polished wood floor. It was, I was still rattled from seeing Mom, the unexpectedness of the coming across her. Sight, the sight of her rooting happily through the dumpster. I put some vivaldi on, hoping the music would settle me down. The glass castle is broken, with poverty unspoken. 
Lying there was he on the ground asking me, would I ever let you down? You were trying to help out, but you were already passed out. Back back to when I was three, making lunch for me. Third degree burns peeling from my skin. Doctors would not allow you in. However, you made your way around, Rex Wall style. Here we go to another town. We have always had it tough, with food never being enough. The garbage piled high around us, turning your promises into rust. I finally opened my eyes to see all the problems you deny. And West Virginia surrounded by trash, knowing my life would soon come to a crash. Going to New York to make my move, following through, through knowing it wouldn't be so smooth. Never going to be able to get away, there on the New York Park bench you lay.